Welcome to Exhibition. And hello, Claire Thackway. Hello, Richard. It's lovely to be here. Great to see you there in Paris, which we'll discuss shortly. Uh, but your exhibition is Between Us. Uh, it's at Le Pavé d'Orsay Gallery in Paris. And how long have you been there in France now? Uh, I've been in France since October uh, 2019. Um, I came here with my family uh, for a residency at the Cité International des Arts with my husband Gregory Hodges' practice. Um, we came here for uh, uh, initially three months and then were able to extend the residency for another three and uh, have set up a studio here just outside the city and um, yeah, yeah, we, we're, we're settled into to Paris life. So what sort of influence uh, do you think in terms of your practice uh, that being a Parisian resident now has had? How has, it, how has it changed or influenced your works? Well, I think my work has always been interested or, or been influenced by um, European figurative painting. And, and I think having access to um, the museum collections here has has meant that I've got face to face access to those to those paintings. Um, so I think I think that has really influenced my work. And then also this very um, soft northern um, sunlight is is very different. And I think the paintings are, are much more muted and 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 quiet. So do you think uh, do you think this is an exhibition that you could have painted? in Australia or, or do these works feel very particular to your European location now? Well, I, I, these works, I, I, uh, I started making uh, paintings within this series about two years ago uh, and worked with a friend um, in my studio in Australia, in Austinmere, to um, set, up, set up these compositions. And um, the painting that I made for the Archibald of Lauren Brinkat was part of, um, part of this body of work um, or the beginning of this body of work. Um, so, so I guess it's work that I've, I've wanted to make for a little while and I've had in the works. Um, but the, uh, the contrast between the colors has, has really um, shifted. So I think that um, yeah, maybe that's something I could have made in Australia. But I think um, the experience we had um, in, you know, from March to May being um, in quite a strict lockdown here uh, has really influenced the content of the work or, or the ideas behind the work. Um, how, has that, how has that influence occurred? Well, I think a lot of the paintings have this very um, narrow depth of field. They're very um, closed in. They're quite, they're, um, they feel quite flat against the surface. There doesn't feel like a deep space. So I think I was thinking about that, that closed in home space. Um, and also, I, I, yeah, I think, it, I think there are ideas around um, uh, breath um, and there's a new kind of element to the work where there's these little kind of aerosols sitting on the surface of the painting and, and coming through behind the painting. So I guess ideas, um, the ideas that have come into it have been based on, our, on my experience of, of um, living through a pandemic. Mm. Um, you, you, you did mention there um, breath and those aerosol marks and particles. There, there do seem to be some quite specific references in the work to, to breath and, and to kind of floating particles uh, yeah. in, the work, in the work breath itself, uh, in the work inhale, exhale, um, and in several of the other paintings we can, we can see these almost visible signs of particulate breathing. And I think the, um, 
what I was thinking with the cloth in these images is it's, it's, it's like a membrane or it's like a veil. And so it's, um, it's as though uh, that veil is something that separates people. Um, we're all wearing masks. So it's almost like this, this, this membrane between people and the breath is something that we are trying to stop penetrating that, that membrane. Um, the painting Breath, I made uh, a version of that early last year um, as we were watching the Australian bushfires and that painting was titled The Air We Breathe. Um, and it's a similar painting of a child with a, a, a cloth over their face and they're holding their face. And so I made that painting just as we were kind of coming out of the bushfire season in Australia and then heading into COVID. So these ideas around breath um, can continue throughout, throughout the year. Tell us a little about the, the sense of intimacy that seems to pervade so many of the works. Uh, that sense of closeness and yet also to some extent a, a, a sense of separation by yeah. those cloth layers occasionally. Intimacy. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. Some of them have two figures. Often it's a, um, a parent and a, a child and sometimes they're um, a single figure. Um, so they could be... Uh, a bedroom space or, or a, they, they, you, you're right, they do feel very um, intimate. Sometimes they're a bit lonely as well with a sing, single figure, but, um, and they, they, they're these quite vulnerable images. So there's one of a, of a figure lying down and one of a figure sort of flopped over. Um, and they feel as though there's, there's a, an exhaustion in them. Um, there, there is a vulnerability or a, or a fragility in the, in the works. Um, but then there's also this sort of parental relationship as well, where there's um, arms embracing a child that you know is there, but you can't see that any, any part of the body, but you can kind of sense through the form of the, the fabric and another one of a child sitting on an on a adult's lap. So it's these very kind of closed in, intimate, intimate experiences. There seems uh, with the sort of works that you're just referring to there uh, an intergenerational tenderness and and protectiveness in some of the works. Absolutely I think my work often looks at intergenerational relationships and the, um, the things we pass on and the things that we share between generations um, but I think also for me having two children um, and living through this strange year, living in a different country to, to, you know, moving to a different country in this time and then being in confinement with my children. Um, yeah, it was something that I was definitely thinking about. Let's go back to the, the fabric or the cloth. Yeah. Can you tell us about your relationship with fabric? because it is something which seems to have figured over the years now very, very strongly. Yeah, it's something that I introduced initially as a, um, as a compositional device to kind of um, connect the figure to the ground or to, to describe the pictorial space. And I initially, a few years ago, I started painting stripes because I felt like it was the most basic form of patterning and it offered a, um, an almost abstract optical um, rhythm to the paintings. And then um, that kind of led me to research the, um, the symbolism of the stripe or, or what, it, what it's um, stood in for or, or, or what connotations we have to it. And um, there's, some, there's some really interesting references to um, hygiene and hazards, uh, and also it can be a symbol of freedom. Uh, we often see it in uniforms or it's been a, a kind of used in dress codes um, and, and also relates to the idea of confinement. If we think about the bars 
of, of the stripe um, is something that really interests me. And I think I haven't really wanted to be didactic about what those stand for. Um, and I'm happy for the viewer to kind of pull their own meanings out of that. Um, but it's been interesting for me as a painter to play with those associations. You mentioned uh, a sense of the uh, of the stripes and the fabric almost creating uh, an abstract composition within the figurative work. How do you create a, a, a balance between a, a sense of abstract and, and the real detail of figurative work that you offer? I think what the fabric offers and what the stripe offers, or what I'm interested in, is seeing how little of the body I can include to still get a sense of, of the mood or, or the gesture that I'm trying to get across. Um, but I do, I do collage several images together and um, see how complicated I can, I can um, make little clusters of, of um, stripe. It's fun for me. It's fun to paint. Um, it and it also think... looks extraordinarily challenging to paint in terms of that really very precisely realistic rendering of very complex folding of cloth. Um, <laughs> yeah, they, they, they're slow. They're, they've been slow to make. <laughs> it's definitely slowed me down. Let's go to the elements of colour and uh, the... The stripes, many of the stripes in these pieces of fabric are, are a kind of dusty, almost, almost eucalyptus green. Um, is, is there a conscious reference to your Australian home in these fabrics or, or is that yeah. just coincidence? No, absolutely. I was, um, it is that eucalyptus green I was going for. Um, and, and also this soft lilac. Um, I was, I was thinking because the stripe has a lot of connotations, there's, I was looking for a palette that felt neutral. Um, I, I've used a, a red or a, a fluoro red ground and then the, that sort of soft green over the top offers this, um, I guess, visual, um, vibration. And then in the, in the more purple paintings, they've got this very um, vibrant mustard ground with this lilac over the top. When we come to what we see of the, uh, the limbs or the hands or the feet of the people portrayed, sometimes there does seem to be a, a sense of weariness or perhaps ennui um, or, or, I don't know, maybe relaxed repose. Where do you think the the emotional tone of those uh, very human parts of the compositions sit? I think it's an, I think it's an exhaustion. I think <laughs> I was, <laughs> I think that, um, yeah, I wanted there to be more tension in them than a feeling of relaxation. I wanted them to feel like this sense, this, this moment of exhaustion and surrender. Um, but in that, I think there's comes back to that idea of a window to an intimate space. So if you were uh, hoping for a certain amount of tension in there, does that, does that mean that you have an idea of what you hope perhaps these works will evoke for the viewer in the gallery? What sort of reaction you hope you might be able to bring from a viewer? I'm always really pleasantly surprised by what people pull out of the work that isn't and in my intention. I think that's something that you have to be ready for as, as an artist, that people are going to bring their own um, associations and, and, and feelings. Um, you know, a couple came in and um, one of the, the man said, um, oh, wow, this is really dark. Like he's looking at the work breath. He said, oh, this, they're suffocating or they can't breathe or they look um, like they're in trouble. And then the woman said, no, they're hiding behind a cloth. They're just playing. And um, so, I, yeah, I, I'm really interested in those um, interpretations. Yeah, and, lovely ambiguity. Yeah, yeah I, think it, I think it is that ambiguity that I'm, that I'm looking for rather than a didactic um, 
message I'm trying to get across. Now we're seeing you uh, today sitting in the gallery itself with your works uh, on the walls behind you. Uh, just give us a little bit of a sense of where this gallery is in relation perhaps to some other well-known French galleries. Yeah, this, uh, this gallery is on uh, Rue de Lille, which is um, just a block away from the Musée d'Orsay. And then uh, just behind me here is uh, the Seine. And then on the other side of the river is the Louvre, um, uh, the Musée Louvre. And neither of those are open at the moment, um, but it is quite an incredible part of town. Um, and speaking of, uh, of your gallery and the, the exhibition uh, that we can see behind you, some of these works, I guess if they, if they don't all get sold, uh, some of these works are going to be shown in Australia in the not too distant future at the Egg and Dart Gallery in Thoreau. Um Can you give us a sense of whether that will be the same exhibition uh, or, or whether it will be a, another iteration? Uh, yeah, we're, we're seeing it as a, a two-part show um, and there will be some crossovers, but it, um, yeah, it's like this, the, the same body of work with, with two separate um, iterations, I guess. And, and when will that be happening? That opens on the uh, 17th of March, so uh, yeah, two months from now. Well, we look forward to that. And it's been a real pleasure to be able to share your exhibition in Paris today. So, Claire Thackway, thanks very much. Thank you, Richard. It's a wonderful opportunity to share it uh, with my Australian friends. Thank you. <laughs>